Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are interested in learning about creating some form of a tutorial or interactive beginning step to your application in AppGyver or maybe even in other app builders, stay tuned. I'm covering the basics of how to do that in today's video. Now before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. Now jumping straight in, when it comes to building things in AppGyver, this is a free codeless development or low code platform. I have tons of other tutorials on my channel, but this is going to make the most sense for people who have used AppGyver before, although I'm sure with other app builders you could find some similar logic. So what we're going to do, we have our super cool app pulled up, which is just our app example here. And we just have a couple of components, and basically we want to take the user through a journey using this application. So what we have is a text component uh, or a title component two text components, an image, a drop-down list that just has two random items, and then a finish button. So the idea here is we want the user to click here, then we want them to click here, then here, and then finish, although your journey can take them throughout your app in different ways. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have the starting point and direct the user there in some way, shape, or form. Then you have a couple of options. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the logic section and go to the marketplace and install three different things. First is going to be hide and you'll find hide component and click install. You'll repeat the process and we're going to find show and do the same for show component. And then lastly, you're going to try to find animate and we're going to install that. The reason we're using these three options is because there are multiple ways for you to make an attractive interface that allows users to kind of understand what the next steps are. So the hide component and show components are pretty self-explanatory. It just makes something visible. And then there's animate, which is my preference, which basically it, you have a ton of options. It can make a component bounce or move around. But the idea is drawing some kind of a some kind of attention to that component. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to start off by putting this image in this container. And then we are going to just add in some text. So we'll scroll up here. And then the text is going to say, now click this image. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to layout and we'll align the text to the center. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this container invisible or just not visible. So we're going to change the visible value to false. This is one of your two options for kind of guiding users. So when users click this text, which is the first thing we want them to do, what we're going to do is we're going to show component. And then in show component, we're just going to find that container that we just hid. And now we're going to click save. Now I have the AppGyver preview app pulled up. So I'm going to click here and you'll see now it's saying now click this image. So that is option one and we can repeat the process going through. So we can then say, okay, what's the next step? When the user clicks this image, we want to animate, we'll choose a different option this time around, and we want to animate the dropdown label. So what we can do is we can go over here, find dropdown field, click save, and we'll save the application. So now when it loads, when we click here, you'll see it says now click this image. When we click this image, it animates the drop down label. Now, one thing to note about this animate option is you have tons of animation options here. For example, if you wanted to choose fade in, when we go through and click this image, you'll see the drop down label does this little fade in effect. You can scroll through, there are tons of different options. Uh, you can choose, again, there's a couple different options, but I would recommend looking into uh, just the typical bounce options, but there are a couple of flip in and flip out 
that may work. Again, the idea is just what makes sense for your app. As you can see, some of these have pretty cool appearance. So then what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to repeat the process, but this time what we're going to do is we're going to have text here that says, now choose an option. And then we're going to go to layout and center this. And then what we're going to do, because we know this is called text four, we're going to make this not visible and kind of follow along with that theme. So we know our image here is what's going to be clicked next, and it's going to animate the drop down component. Now we also want it to show, and we want it to show text four. Now we're going to click save and save. So now let's see what this process looks like. We click here to get started. Now we click this image. And then you'll see now it says now choose an option, but it's not in the right order. So one of the tricky parts about the show and hide functionality is you have to pay attention to where your components are. You'll see this actually has to go down beneath in order for this flow to make sense. So let's click here, click this image, and you'll see it says now choose an option, and it animated the drop down label. But you have to decide whether or not you want to hide these previous steps or not. So what we're going to do is we're just going to move forward. But if you want to, at any point when something is done, for example, if you want this component at the beginning, which starts everything, if you want it to hide itself, then you can just also add in hide. And when you want to hide that component, you just find the text that says this component, or you find whichever one you want to hide. So you'll see when we click this, it disappears. So that's an option for you. I'm going to remove it, but I did want to bring it up. So lastly, what we're going to be doing is this drop-down label. So we need to choose an option from the drop-down label. So we'll say on component tap, we may want to show a final bit of text that maybe allows the user to finish. So in this case, maybe we just want this to take us out of the app. So what we'll do is we're going to make this finish option not visible. And then on component tap, let's say we may want to make a little bit of a delay, for example. We can drag our delay over leave it at the default, which is 500, uh, I believe, milliseconds. And then we can use the installed show component. And we're going to show our button. And then what we're going to do, just because we can, is after showing it, let's give it a quick animate of some kind. So we're going to animate our button. And then we're going to give it something just like a shake. So now let's test out this flow and see what it looks like. The user loads the app. They click here to get started. Now they click this image. Now they click this drop down, And you'll see that finish is moving. Then when we click finish, nothing happens. So at this point, you could add a new page, for example. And let's just say we call this home. And then this is that final page. Then when the page has loaded or when your finish button has been selected, you could simply open that new page. So this is how you would get your user through that initial stage. Again, you can change it however you want, have all of your components visible or not from the beginning. But the idea is as they're going through, then they land at their home page. Now you may be wondering, how do I get this to happen the first time the user does it and not any time after? So for that, you would need to check out another video I have, which I'll link in the description, which is about saving user specific data. The idea is when the page loads, you can set logic to check if a certain value is present in Firebase, for example. 
So what you could do is you could run a function to say get record and then check the user ID and then find a value that you have set, for example, zero if the user has never opened the app and one if they have gone through this tutorial. And basically everyone would start at zero as default. And then when the button is selected right here, you could just update that record for that user saying change this value to one. That way, every time this page is loaded, it will check and see, okay, the value is one. Let's open the home page or the value is zero. Stay on this page. I hope that makes sense. And I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.